Several years ago, a book was published entitled Beyond Death's Door by Maurice Rawlings. Dr. Rawlings, a specialist in internal medicine and cardiovascular disease, resuscitated many people who had been clinically dead. Dr. Rawlings, a devout atheist, considered all religion hocus-pocus and death nothing more than a painless extinction. But something happened in 1977 that brought a dramatic change in the life of Dr. Rawlings. He was resuscitating a man, terrified and screaming, descending down into the flames of hell. He wrote in his book, Each time he, the patient, regained heartbeat and respiration, the patient screamed, I am in hell! He was terrified and pleaded with me to help him. I was scared to death. Then I noticed a genuinely alarmed look on his face. He had a terrified look worse than the expression seen in death. This patient had a grotesque grimace, expressing sheer horror. His pupils were dilated, and he was perspiring and trembling. He looked as if his hair was on end. Then, still another strange thing happened. He said, Don't you understand? I'm in hell. Don't let me go back to hell. The man was serious, and it finally occurred to me that he was indeed in trouble. He was in a pan panic like I had never seen before. Dr. Rawlings said no one who could have heard his screams and saw the look of terror on his face could doubt for a single minute that he was actually in a place called hell. The Bible continually, continually warns of a place called hell. There are over 162 references in the New Testament alone which warns of hell, and over 70 of these references were uttered by Yahushua HaMashiach himself, Jesus the Christ. Before we go further in the video, let's um, bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you with thanksgiving and praise that you have made a way for us where there seemed to be no way. And we just give you all praise and glory for that. As we study together and review this presentation, we bind any unclean spirit and demonic uh, interference from without and within that could hinder your message for, you, for your people and for those that may not know you as their Lord and Savior. For those that may not know that you want a personal relationship with them, that you love them so much that you gave your life in our place. You took our sin to the tree. You were crucified. You died. You were buried. And you rose again the third day so that there could be a way back to you. So as we go through this presentation, if there's anyone that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, may they receive you into their heart and may they walk with you from this day forward, knowing that you will teach them and grow them in the knowledge of yourself because you are the only way the only truth and the life. No one can come to the Father, Yahuwah, except through you. Now all praise and glory be with you as we continue. In the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, I pray. Amen. Burning Man Burning Man is a festival that we will be looking into. And I just found the title very ironic. It reminded me of the person we just read about in Dr. Rawlings' book, the excerpt. I haven't read his book. I don't know the outcome of that individual. I don't know if he ended up giving his life to Yahushua, Jesus, or not. What he experienced was definitely an awakening. 
Was a resuscitation successful to where he had an opportunity to re receive Yahusha, Jesus? I, I, I can't tell you. But we all are given the responsibility and the ability while there is breath in us to write the ending of our story. And it can have a beautiful ending or it can have a devastating ending. What determines that is our decision. Our decision, decision to receive Jesus Christ, Yahushua HaMashiach, as our Lord and Savior or not. So think about that. What will be the end of your story? Or maybe you have a loved one or a friend that hasn't made this decision. And as we've stated before, our decisions determine our destiny. And this is the most important decision you will ever make in your entire life. So don't be deceived. Because as we have studied in this series, you do have an enemy and he hates you. He wants to kill you. He wants to steal from you. He wants to utterly destroy you. And he will tell you any lie you want to hear to accomplish that. He is ruthless, uncaring, unloving. He actually celebrates when we deny Yahusha. While Yahusha, his heart breaks for us, seeing the deception. Yahusha Hamashiach has done his part. Now it's up to you. You are, oh, you are, you have a free will. He's given you free will to make that decision. You can't make someone love you. He doesn't want us to be made to love him or just say it with lip service. He wants our heart. He wants us to truly understand what he gave up to save us. He wants us to truly understand how much he loves us. He truly loves you. So we have a decision, each one of us. And the decision pretty much is burning man or to become his kings and priests of the Melchizedek order in his heavenly kingdom. He's from the tribe of Judah and he gave all that we would be with him one day. That's the only way to get out of this prison on earth and be returned to him. Because you see, he knew you before you were born. He knitted you in your mother's womb. And he loved you that much to come to this earth and die for you. But most importantly, after he died and was buried, he arose not like these other false gods. He is a true living God. He lives. If you want to know him, just ask him. Ask him with a sincere heart. Get a good Bible. You can start with the New King James Bible if you want. A little bit easier to read. And ask him to teach you. And he will. There's no better teacher than Yahushua HaMashiach. He will walk you through the scriptures and then pray for a fellowship that studies his word and studies it clearly. And we'll talk about that more later. So in this video, we are each responsible for a decision that determines our life story of where we will end up either as a burning man or as a king and priest in the royal priesthood, the Melchizedek order. That decision will determine that our destiny, our eternity in heaven or hell. So let's read a little bit about the burning man in this article. 
It says, tens of thousands of people will visit Black Rock Desert, Nevada to attend the Burning Man Festival between August 27th and September 4th, which right now we're pretty much smack dab in the middle of that festival taking place. And we bind evil coming from that festival. We ask that Yahuwah rebukes the fallen angels associated with that festival. Let's read on. The first Burning Man took place in 1986 on a San Francisco beach, and since then, every year the event draws nearly 70,000 people. Larry Harvey and his friend Jerry James knock together an improvised wooden figure and drag it down to a Baker Beach on the summer solstice. The festival is described on its site. They light it up, and a curious crowd gathers to watch it burn, and so it began. By 1990, the festival became so popular that it had to move out from San Francisco, with some 350 people heading out to the des desert as the fire ceremony grew and exploded into an art and free expression festival. The tradition is still followed, with the festival culminating in the burning of a massive effigy. The ten main principles written by co-founder Harvey in 2004 are radical inclusion, self-reliance, self-expression, community cooperation, civic responsibility, gifting, decommodification, which is not found in Webster's Dictionary. So if you want it defined, just go to their site. Participation, immediacy, and leaving no trace. The 2017 art theme for the festival will be Radical Ritual. In 2017, we will invite participants, they say, to create interactive rites, ritual processions, elaborate images, shrines, icons, temples, and visions. Our theme will occupy the ambiguous ground that lies between reverence and ridicule, faith and belief. The absurd and the stunningly sublime, the description of the theme reads. The human urge to make events, objects, actions, and personalities sacred is protean. It can fix on and inhabit anyone or anything. This year, our art theme will release this spirit in the Black Rock Desert. The website adds, this year's theme is an attempt to reinvent ritual in our post-post-modern world. For this purpose, we will disregard assertions of belief and concentrate instead on the immediate experience of play. Belief contains, define, and limit meaning. They can reduce truth to a rational commodity. But play can free us to envision truths of which we have no proof or warrant. Such play as we conceive it breaks down the distinction that divides belief from make-believe. Wholehearted and creative play induces self-surrender to experience that is beyond the scope of reasoned thought. In 1 Corinthians 10, 7 we read, Neither are you to be idolaters, as some of them, as it has been written. The people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. When we make Jesus Christ, Yahushua HaMashiach, our Lord and Savior, we become his priest and king and kings. And when doing that, when inviting Yahushua HaMashiach into our life, he sits on the throne of our hearts. And because of that, we then become the temple of Yahuwah. Because his Holy Spirit, his Ruach HaKodesh, lives in us and through us. And we are part of his royal priesthood, his holy nation. He has set us apart at that point because we are born again. We are a new creation. And though we find ourselves on this earth, this is not our home. 
We are simply ambassadors for our King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And he shows us the way and teaches us daily through his word. So like the temple in the days of Moses, out in the desert, they had a tabernacle. They had a holy place. They had a most holy place. And then they also had the outer court. So similarly are our bodies. We have the uh, Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh, living in us and through us, in the most holy place in us. And then we have our soul, which is also a holy place. And then the body, our outer courts, if you will, uh, of, of our temple. Similar diagram is over here. Our body is the outer court, soul is the inner court, and we know so far with our series, our soul consists of mind, will, and emotions. And our spirit is the Holy, the Holy Spirit lives in the Holy of Holies within us. That is why we are to keep our temples clean and pure. That's our reasonable service. And it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight giving your life to Yahuwah through his son, Yahushua HaMashiach, when you sincerely do that, yes, you are born again right then and there. And he takes us just as we are, but it's a process to um, uh, say that it's no longer I that live, but Jesus that lives in me. Because we die to self and and we live for him. So, all of our self-directed ways and all of our old ways that things we used to do, we need to clean those things out and become more and more like him. And we're going to look at those examples as we go forward. In Romans 14, 11, it says, For it has been written, As I live, says Yahweh, every knee, that means your knee, any human being, and um, will kneel before him and probably all of these entities as well <laughs> these uh, fallen angels and um, demonic spirits they already know who he is um, Romans fourteen eleven. for it has been written as I live says Yahweh every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to Elohim each one of us, therefore, shall give an account of himself to Elohim, to Yahuwah, to God. So every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to God. Each one of us, therefore, shall give account of himself to Elohim. You can't, you can't go uh, enter his kingdom on someone else's coattails. It doesn't matter if your grandmother was um, a devout Christian, devout believer. It's each person's responsibility to develop that relationship with a living Yahuwah, a living God that is all-knowing, all-present, and, um, and um, um, all-powerful, omnipotent, omnipotent. The believer that is saved in Yahusha, this is pretty much what it looks like. We have our body, which is the earth suit, and um, and within our body we have we are a soul. We function with a mind, will, and emotion. And when we invite Jesus, Yahusha, into our life. To live in us and through us. And it's no longer I that live, but Jesus or Yahushua that lives through me. Then his Ruach, Hakadesh, comes in and takes the throne seat of our lives. So in essence, that's this is what it looks like. So what is saved or born again? In John 3.3, 3, Yahushua Jesus answered and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born from above, 
he is unable to see the reign of Elohim. Nicodemus said to him, How is a man able to be born when he is old? Is he able to enter into his mother's womb a second time and be born? Jesus answered, Yahushua answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he is unable to enter into the reign of Elohim. And notice that is a capital S, meaning Holy Spirit or Ruach HaKodesh. That which has been born of flesh is flesh, and that which has been born of the Spirit is spirit. So our spirit is saved and, and is born again, is full of life by the Ruach HaKodesh. And born again meaning, like he just said, we are first born of water from our mother's womb. But when we humbly bow ourselves and invite Yahushua HaMashiach to come into our life, that's when we are made new. Behold, all things are made new. He miraculously changes us from the inside out. And that is being born of the Spirit. He said, do not marvel that I said to you, you have to be born from above. The Spirit breathes where it wishes. And you hear the sound of it, but do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So is everyone who has been born of the Spirit. Ephesians 2 reads, And you were dead in trespasses and sins. Until we, we find Yahushua HaMashiach and make him Lord and Savior of our lives, we are essentially walking dead men, um, dead man walking, um, because, because we are sinners, and all have sinned and fall short of the glory of Yahuwah. And Yahuwah, God, doesn't allow sin into heaven. So if we are all sinners, how are we going to get into heaven? It's only through his blood. It's only through his sacrifice that we are able to stand before the Most High Elohim. So when Elohim looks upon us, he doesn't see our sin. He sees his son's blood that has washed our sins as far as the east is from the west. That is the way we can enter into heaven. That is the only way we can enter into heaven. So Ephesians 2 says, And you were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the ruler of the authority of the air, Hasatan or Satan, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Again, I've shared with you, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of Yahuwah. I'm not picking on anyone. Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. He came to save the world. So don't hear me. Hear him calling out to you before it's too late because time is drawing close. Your time is running out. This isn't a game and you've been warned. And he's sending the message loud and clear. Among whom also we all once lived in the lust of our flesh, doing the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, as also the rest. But Elohim, who is rich in compassion because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Messiah. By favor you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenlies in Messiah, Yahushua, Jesus, in order to show in the coming ages the exceeding riches of his favor and kindness toward us in Messiah, Yahushua, or Jesus the Christ. For by favor you have been saved through belief, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of Elohim, 
It is not by works so that no one should boast. We become born again by faith in believing what Jesus has done for us. Only by faith. And once you believe, you are grafted in. You become Israel. Israel are those people that um, hereditarily have come through the bloodline of Israel, but have also given their life in, to Yahusha as their Lord and Savior. So it's through lineage, but you still have to have faith in Yahushua Mashiach, or it's through Gentiles being grafted in, like myself, having belief in Yahushua Mashiach, we are grafted into the tree to be Israel. We are Israel. Ephesians 2, 4, But Elohim, who is rich in compassion because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Messiah. By favor, you have been saved. In Ephesians 1, 13, it reads, In whom you also, having heard the word of the truth, the good news of your deliverance, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the set-apart spirit of promise. So here we have the body. We are a soul with mind, will, and emotions, and we come to life through the Ruach HaKodesh, His Holy Spirit. And we are sealed with the set-apart spirit of promise. We are His. Now, the non-believer, on the other hand, let's take a look, which all of us are at some point in time, especially when you reach the age of accountability. Infants in, in that um, age group um, are not at the age of accountability and are taken care of by Yahweh. The non-believer, or sometimes referred to as a person that is lost, also has the earth suit in which the soul uh, resides because that person is a soul as well. But the spirit, there's an empty space. His spirit or her spirit is dead. So we have the body, we have the soul, mind, will, and emotion, but the spirit has not been brought to life through the Ruach HaKodesh. They have not made Yahusha their Lord and Savior. And so that's why we read in Ephesians 2, 1, and you were dead in trespasses and sins, but when you give your life to uh, Yahusha, then you or it's no longer you that lives, but Christ that lives in you because you die to self and you live for him. You, you die to all those um, self-directed lifestyles that we read about in the burning man. And we ask Yahuwah daily, how do you want me to live this day? How do you want me to answer this question with this person? How do you want me to, to walk? as you walked. So the non-believer, the lost person, um, is fair game for Hasatan or Satan. Um, the army of darkness can affect his soul and also can affect his spirit if that person invites such an uh, unclean spirit into his life. I mean, that's only if portals are open because all creation is Yahuwah's. So if a person with the free will invites an unclean spirit or demon into their life, then they are opening themselves up for some very hard times. Now, make no mistake, we as believers, too, 
have to um, understand that SA tan can affect our souls as well. Not our spirit, not where our Ruach Kakadesh lives, but, but still, when we first become believers, we still need to clean up our soul realm, if you will. So the non believer looks this way body is a soul as well, but has not been born again by the Ruach Kakadesh. Their spirit, in essence, is dead as we read in Ephesians 2, 1, and you were dead in trespasses and sin. So when believers or non-believers participate in satanic entertainment, and you go, well, why would believers participate in satanic entertainment? I mean, just look at the movies. Look, listen to music. Um, uh, celebrate, you know, Halloween or, or do all those pagan holidays. That's how a believer. So these things can affect the soul of both the believer and non-believer. Um, but a believer definitely shouldn't be opening their life up to that. They should know better if they're staying in, in his word. But if not, if they're carnal Christians or carnal believers, then these things um, can affect their soul realm. So an ignorance about laying on of hands. If you don't know where to go and study his word and if you participate with the wrong group there's um, infiltrators within most churches and not every place that calls himself a church or a congregation is of yahweh so be careful who you let lay hands on you and in the same respect as a believer be careful whom you lay hands on um, cursed foods that's been going on for generations and as we studied last video um, look at all these GMOs and genetically modified foods the splicing of human and, and animal you know when you start splicing DNA of human and animal you, you don't if it's a cow let's say you don't have a cow anymore you have a beast and you can't tell you can't tell from the exterior if is that a cow or is that a beast? The genie's out of the bottle, if you will. Satanic rituals. Pornography. Incest. And many times, people that have given their life to Yahuwah um, had no control over many of these things happening to them prior to their belief in Yahuwah. And so, that yeah, Yahushua loves us just the way we are, but he's going to help each individual recover. In Psalm 147.3, he says, I, he heals the brokenhearted, binding up their wounds. So only Yahushua can heal that brokenheartedness that, that a person has suffered. Uh, fornication, sex outside of marriage, um, witchcraft of any kind, yoga, new age. And these are just examples. I mean, we, we could go on and on and on. But all these sorts of things affect a person's soul. And we all know, if you look around yourself, we are constantly bombarded with all of this. So really... <laughs> movies are pretty much out TV is is pretty much out um, and um, music it's on all genres of music so it's very limited you you are very limited but he gives you an abundant life a life that rises up above the filth of this this earth and Satan worship you know some just go um, fall into Satan worship. Um, sadly, uh, s even satanic um, coloring books are being brought into um, elementary schools. Um, Halloween, etc. I included Halloween specifically because in a twinkle of an eye, it's going to be here in October. And there is no reason that any believer should participate in Halloween at all. If you want to participate in festivals and feasts, you should follow Leviticus 23, 
that tells us about his feast days. And um, we have, you know, the Feast of Trumpets coming up, Day of Atonement, and Sukkot. So those are the um, feasts and festivals that we should participate in, not Halloween, not in any shape or form. It didn't work out very well in the Bible in the Old Testament, <laughs> and it's not going to work out well for you and your family. You are essentially teaching, raising your child and children and grandchildren in a way that they should follow as a tan and not Yahushua when you do that. And books like Harry Potter, you know, it doesn't matter if the first lady endorsed it, um, Mrs. Bush. It doesn't matter if Laura Bush uh, endorsed Harry Potter. Oh, it's good for reading. No, it's not good for reading. It's not good for reading. It is satanically inspired. And it um, encourages children and grand your grandchildren to practice witchcraft. So all of these things we have to understand, and the list is almost sadly endless, that all of these things can affect our soul. And, and the non-believer is even more vulnerable. You know, most Christians, uh, believers can be oppressed, oppressed by these things. And um, they can enter the soul. But they can attack, attack the believer from within and without, as we have studied. And the same with the non-believer. But if the non-believer opens themselves up to a demonic entity, the non-believer can end up being fully possessed. So this isn't um, something that we should play with. Again, you have an enemy. He wants to kill you. He wants to destroy you. He wants to steal your life. So as a believer, we can have the Ruach HaKadosh, but if we open our soul up to these um, unclean spirits and even um, to a demonic um, level, they can come in and affect our soul realm and push our Ruach HaKadosh off the throne and start um, calling the shots because it is free will we still have. And uh, we talked about the strong man spirit. Then that believer would be dealing with a strong man that will make it that much harder. But the strong man can be bound it can be dethroned, and the believer has the ability to take authority over those unclean associated demonic spirits and dethrone that strong man and be cleaned and let Yahuwah restore your soul. So, um, so believers, sadly, in this day and age, are practicing Christianized witchcraft whether they know it or not. It's not a game. It has to stop. The time has come that there is very little time to turn this around. And now is the time while there is breath in your body to change your status. Do you really want to appear before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords that has laid down his life for you and say, well, I, I, I still wanted to piddle with all this stuff. Really? Really? Don't be deceived. You are made a new creation through the Ruach HaKadosh, through Yahushua laying down his life. Follow through with that. Don't be double-minded. Don't keep one foot in the world and give Yahushua one foot. Really? I don't think we want to do that. I think you're in very dangerous territory if you do that, if any of us do that. I'm preaching to myself too. I found this message to be very timely. It's a previously recorded message put out by Torah to the Tribes 
by Matthew Nolan is called Halloween and the Believer, a Deadly Mix. I highly recommend everyone go to that uh, link. I'll leave it in the description section and watch it. And it will reinforce what we're reviewing in this video and also convince you, if you have any doubt whatsoever, it will convince you to lay aside these man-made pagan holidays and turn to his word and follow his feast days and his Moedim, his Shabbats, and his festivals, not the, the pagan worldly festivals. So in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, And the Elohim of peace himself set you completely apart. We are to be set apart from this world. And your entire spirit and being, your soul and body, be preserved blameless at the coming of our master, Yahushua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. So, as we have studied in this series, and this is so important that we get this, our soul equals our mind, will, and emotions. I think we should have that down pat by now. Our mind is what I think. Our will is what I want. Emotions are what I feel. And over here, we see our soul realm, if you will, and mind, will, and emotions. Our will determines our thoughts. The state of mind determines emotions and emotions our will determines our will our emotions determine our wills will so it's a cycle it's a cycle and this circular thinking can cause a person to spiral downward and lose hope because if they're letting their will determine um, their state of mind and letting their state of mind determine their emotions and then letting their emotions determine their will, then they're missing a very important piece because they are thinking their thoughts. In his word, he says, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are higher better <laughs> you know he's he doesn't think our thoughts that's why we are to focus on his word and have the mind of christ if we have the mind of christ we break that downward spiral and if we break that downward spiral then we're going to be looking up and we're going to be living an abundant life so in john 3 3 Yahushua says, he answered and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born from above, he is unable to see the reign of Elohim. So on this side, this looks like the non-believer in Yahushua, the lost person, if you will. They have a body, they are soul, but they have a huge empty place where um, that can only be filled, ideally, by the Ruach HaKodesh. But as it stands empty it is fair game for Hasatan Satan the believers diagram too has a body is a soul and has the sealed Ruach HaKodesh living in them and through them they have moved from being lost because we've all been lost at one point in time and then being found Luke 15, 32 says, But it was fitting to make merry and to rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. And he was lost, and now he is found. Amen. Our spirit is saved when we first receive Yahushua, but our soul still needs a lot of work and maturing. We need to make the right decisions each day. And um, we need to keep our temple clean. And Yahweh is the only one that can help us do that. So what about our soul? We know when we die, our fleshly bodies do not go with us. The soul and spirit does, however, leave the body. 
In Psalm 49, 15, it reads, But Elohim does redeem my being, my soul, from the power of the grave, for he does receive me. Selah. Selah means ponder that. Jeremiah 31, 25, For I shall fill the weary being, the soul, and I shall replenish every grieved being, every grieved soul he will replenish. Psalm 143.3, For the enemy has pursued my being. He, the enemy has pursued our soul. He has crushed my life to the ground. He has made me dwell in dark places like the dead of old. Don't listen to him. He's a liar. Psalm 42.5, Don't let the enemy triumph in your life. Don't be deceived. Don't be fooled by all the propaganda on TV and the music and the fads. Psalm um, 42.5 Why are you depressed, O my being, O my soul? And why are you restless within me? Wait for Elohim, for I shall yet thank him for the deliverance of his face. Psalm 6.3 And my being, my soul, has been greatly troubled, and you, O Yahuwah, till when? Psalm 17.13 Arise, O Yahuwah God, confront him, cause him to bend, deliver my soul, deliver my being from the wrong by your sword. Psalm 35.4 Let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that devise my hurt. Psalm 35, 12, they rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. There's so many scriptures in the Psalms, especially on our soul. Our soul is so important. Take care of your soul. Take care of your soul. Take care of your temple. Psalm 35, read Psalm 36, read Psalm 37 in your quiet time. In Psalm 23, 3, it says, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Psalm 19.7 The law of Yahuwah is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise is simple. Psalm 34.22 Yahuwah redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. So, as believers, our soul can be afflicted, as we've shared already. Um, if we don't have the full armor of Yahuwah, if we don't put on that helmet of uh, deliverance, of salvation, um, the mind can um, start thinking perverse thoughts if we expose our mind to perverse things and our will we can become addicted to um, these products that they are putting out with more addictive and addictive chemicals that are harder and harder for people to stop from cigarettes to um, pot to um, hard drugs i mean these have been chemically modified to make it very hard for a person to be free but praise be to yahuwah Praise be to God. He has made a way. He can rid you of those addictions. So even if you have an addiction, he came to set the captives free. You can be free in Yahusha. Our emotions as believers, we can be depressed, you know, and and all of these same things can take place in us whether when we were non-believers or after we become believers again after we become believers it's a process to um to stop that circular thinking and start having the mind of yahushua the mind of christ so it, it's a process it takes time but he sees us through so Know that believers can be depressed, anxious, have addictions, be obsessed with idols, be hateful, bitter, unforgiving, etc. And as I shared, it takes time, energy, risk, and love to deliver our souls from sinful ties and bring our flesh under submission to Yahuwah. You may have to change some friends. 
you may have to distance yourself some from family members. Um, he will lead and guide you um, in that process. Cleaning out our temple and bringing our flesh under submission is a process. Think of the process as possessing the promised land of our soul. Just like Joshua led the Israelites into um, uh, Jericho, into the promised land. Um, you know, they still had to go from city to city and conquer and possess the land. And um, they had to throw many of the giants and Nephilim out of that territory, just like in our in our soul area, once we are believers, we need to cl clean out the den of thieves. We need to clean out those things that we perceive as giants, whether they're addictions or, or um, you know, um, anything that is drawing us down. We need to kick out the den of thieves, you know, uh, unclean spirits or any strong man, and it can be done. James 1.13 says, let no one say when he is enticed, I am enticed by Elohim, for Elohim is not enticed by evil matters, and he entices no one, but each one is enticed when he is drawn away by his own desires and trapped. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it has been accomplished, brings forth death. Do not go astray, my beloved brothers. So Hasatan, Satan, and the army of darkness cannot force a person to sin, but through temptations, he can bring a person to submit to sin. So sin is from two sources. I mean, we personally can just have our own thought to choose to sin. That's personal rebellion. Or we can be demonically influenced from within or without. So our goal is to have no pigs in the parlor, like I shared in the last video. Would you go to your neighbor and say, hey, I want to bring over your pigs that you take care of and I want to move them into my living area. Would you do that? I mean, that is how ridiculous when we when we tamper uh, in the realm of satanic dark things. That is inviting pigs into our soul, into our outer court of our temple. And the answer is to declare no pigs in the parlor. Declare our temple to be a temple of prayer. We enter the promised land through Yahushua, Jesus, just as Joshua led the Israelites into the promised land. But keep in mind, however, to receive the fullness of his promise, we must possess and take authority over our land and our temple. If we want that abundant life, we are going to have to understand spiritual warfare to know how to possess the land. You just can't go in and sit down. Otherwise, we step into the promised land and never enjoy the promised fruit of the land flowing with milk and honey. We subsequently would never be able to enjoy, like I shared, the abundant life that he came to give us. The believer... What does a believer look like that is um, saved and spirit-filled in Yahushua or in Jesus? Know that we hurt Yahuwah if we are not his 100%. So our goal is to be his 100%. And when we see that we've fall, fallen short in a particular area, we ask for forgiveness and lay that down before him. And he he'll take care of that for us and with us he'll help us deal with that in ephesians 4 30 it says and do not grieve do not grieve the set apart spirit of elohim by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption you know peter is an excellent example we know that he once denied um yahushua three times you know and but yet at the end of his life you know when Yahushua came and met him on that shore, oh, he was just so renewed. And that was when he really became spirit-filled and, and he ultimately gave his life. And he wouldn't even allow them to 
crucify him right side up. He chose to be crucified upside down because he didn't feel worthy enough to be crucified in the same position as his Lord and Savior, Yahushua HaMashiach. So again, we have the body, we are a soul, and we are um, a spirit-filled believer is totally filled with the Ruach, HaKadosh. And um, what does that look like? Well, we know Yahushua was the ultimate set-apart life. And we do see um, many of the disciples that, that um, had 100%. They were willing to lay down their lives. We see the story of Stephen, even, that, um, that laid down his life and took the stoning to his death, but just was totally filled with a Ruach HaKadosh. So again, we've read this verse again, but I'm going to say it again. And, and the Elohim of peace himself set you completely apart and your entire spirit, your being, your soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our master, Yahushua HaMashiach. Now this is the ideal diagram here. So in this diagram, we no longer have this circular thinking in our mind, in our emotions, in our will. When we are spirit-filled, we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Yahushua. The body is now subject to the mind which is subject to the spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh. And our will, we have the will of our Father, Yahuwah. The will carries out the will of Yahuwah. And our emotions are subject to the fruit of the Spirit. So our emotions demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit. And we will know one another by our fruit. And that is how you determine a true believer in Yahushua HaMashiach, is by their fruit. Because believers and non-believers look the same on the outside. You will know them, his word says, by their fruit. So um, here in this diagram, we see Yahushua, the Son, Yahuwah, the Father, and the Ruach Kakadesh, the Holy Spirit, working in us to make sure that we are having the mind of Christ, the will of the Father, and our emotions are showing the fruit of the Ruach Kakadesh living in us and through us. That's our goal. That is our goal. So the spirit-filled believer in Yahushua, I mean, just radiates. Um, it should be, we should be so filled with the spirit that Anyone in our presence knows who we or we belong to. In a perfect person like Yahushua, no place was given to Hasatan. He always kept on the full armor of his father. So what to know about demonic effects on believers? A person cannot be owned by a demon, lost or saved. The soul belongs to Yahweh. Ezekiel 18.4 Behold, all souls are mine, as the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. When a person in the Bible was possessed, it meant they were under its control. We will term that as being demonized, if you will. There is no doubt that believers can be oppressed by Satan and his army of darkness. Second Corinthians 12, 7, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. And Ephesians 4.27, neither give place to the devil. In Acts 5.3, but Peter said, Ananias 
why has satan filled your heart to lie to the set apart spirit and keep back from the price of the land for yourself again are we listening to uh are we tuned into radio hasatan satan or are we tuned into radio yahuwah we have to take those thoughts captive and before we act determine who we are listening to yahuwah or satan or our own thoughts can a true believer have a demon in them? Yes, but cannot be where the Holy Spirit, the Ruach, is. The believer does indeed have authority over these spirits that may affect and oppress our souls. Second Corinthians 11.1 1. I wish that you would bear with me in a little folly, but indeed you are bearing with me. For I am jealous for you with a jealousy according to Elohim. For I gave you in marriage to one husband to present you as an innocent maiden, maiden to Messiah. But I am afraid lest, as the serpent deceived Eve by his trickery, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Messiah. For indeed, if he who is coming proclaims another Yahusha whom we have not proclaimed, or if you receive a different spirit which you have not received or a different good news which you have not accepted you put up with it well enough so beware of false messiahs false doctrine um, beware of the alpha course or new age religion uh, or um, other um, religions such as Hinduism, Buddha, B Buddhism, Mormonism. Um, beware of false doctrine. So what is our present predicament? I was watching um, part two of uh, The Origin of Sin by Chuck Missler, and I took some excerpts and adapted them somewhat. He shared, America is in moral freefall. Clearly, we can see the spirit of Jezebel and Delilah on steroids nowadays. We are victims of spiritual warfare. We have mainstream media masking truth, pushing propaganda. We have courts without justice, we have dumbed down juries, we have radicalized judges and radicalized prosecutors. We have anger and hate replacing patriotism. Look at BLM, Antifa, SJW, so social justice warriors, if you will. Um, we have schools deliberately dumbing down our youth and infilling them with lies to break down the family, to break down faith, and to break down our country. We have replaced our traditional heritage with multiculturalism, revisionism, and values, relativism. We have open borders. We have attack on believers. We have the rewriting of history. Um, it's just a process of like deny, deflect, demonize the good and exalt the evil nowadays. In addition, our government is now the purveyor of immorality. Why are we surprised? Governments have always loved crises. They provide the rationale for increasing budgets and bureaucracies and subjugating the population. Most new dictators create external crises to consolidate the internal powers. In our country, they long ago learned that social crises serve as well as military ones. So sorry for that typo. There is one insight that supplies a key missing link, and that is immorality. We have been studying that two of the most prevalent strongman spirits in these last days will be Jezebel's and Delilah's. They can be male, they can be female. They promote immorality. And they are not only prevalent, they are on steroids nowadays. Those are just two of the strongman spirits we will face. But we definitely, most definitely need to know 
their characteristics because whether you like it or not, we are in a war. It is a spiritual war and it needs to be fought with spiritual weapons. And you need to dust off that armor of Yahuwah and prepare it and prepare yourselves for battle. Immorality result in social crises. It is a no is it any wonder our governments have an enormous incentive to promote immorality? They've always known that military crises can increase budgets and increase the power of the government, the deep state. What they came to also realize that, you know, social civil crises you can pretty much do the same thing. Sadly, they see that that too increases budgets and increases bigger government and deep state control. And so, since that increases the budget, yes, they push immorality. And then immorality causes social civil crises. And then we have this circular process right here. Because when you're caught in this type of um, process, you are definitely not one with the mind of Yahuwah. And Satan is laughing his himself left and right. He's breaking a rib. He's laughing so hard, sadly. He looks at us as pawns and as his prize. But as we awaken, as we firmly put on our full armor, as we pray without ceasing, as we, when we have done all to stand, to stand, therefore, then we will have victory. We have victory through Yahushua HaMashiach. He has already won the war. We have to fight battles, but he has won the war. And he is looking for um, his bride to stand firm and stand up only for him and keep herself for him or himself pure for him. So today, this immorality triangle, if you will, is definitely being pushed by Jezebel and Delilah spirits. And we went over Jezebel characteristics. We will soon go over Delilah spirits, um, their characteristics, characteristics, but it may be next video. But, um, and there, there's so many other strongman spirits, but these are two of the pr prevalent ones. So we will um, continue to, um, we'll start next video um, looking into this further. Um, we should be able to cover the Delilah spirit at that time. And... Um, and both Jezebel and Delilah, they work with the same function as Satan in the Army of Darkness, is to steal, kill, and destroy. So, um, as I've shared before, Delilah will be the second prevalent spirit in the last days, working toward destroying the body of believers in Yahushua from within. Recognizing its characteristics is extremely important for your spiritual safety. In addition, knowing the characteristics allow you to mount an effective and appropriate spiritual response as Jezebel uh, and Delilah can be either female or male. So, um, so that is what we're up against. But again, we should not, not have any fear. Yahushua HaMashiach has won the war, but we are to stand and we are to possess our promised land of our soul. We are not to sell out to Hasatan. We are not to give in. We are not to synchronize. And we will see how um, the beautiful plan Yahweh has laid out before us in our next session. And though we may know and study the characteristics of Jezebel and Delilah, we will also be so wise to them that 
um, we will make those spirits impotent. So thank you so much for joining me on this journey of us learning together um, what we probably should have learned a long time ago. And, um, and so we will we'll continue next um, video. And until then, uh, be blessed and stay in your full armor of Yahweh, full armor of God. And um, take every thought captive. So let's close in prayer. Dear Yahweh, we just thank you for imparting to us yet more wisdom in this session. And we look forward to next session. We see the subtleties of how Satan wants us to stumble and fall. But by us having the mind of Christ and we follow the will of our Father, and we um, show the fruit of the Ruach HaKadosh, the fruit of the Spirit, then we walk victoriously, and then we have abundant life. Thank you for helping us see how we can possess this promised land of our soul, how we can possess the, um, our promised land of our households, how we can possess the promised land of our communities, and our states and governments. We um, submit all government authorities to be under your rule because you hold their heart in your hand and you can turn them whichever way you want. And we pray that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If there was anyone that wanted to make Yahushua HaMashiach their Lord and Savior, I just want to lead them in a prayer and they can put it in their own words. But it would go something like this. Dear Jesus, dear Yahusha, I pray that you will come into my life and live in me and through me. I humbly ask for you to forgive me of all of my sins. And I just pray that, that um, you will lead and guide me each day to live as you would want me to live. I understand that you will take me just as I am, but you will strengthen me in the knowledge of, of whom you are and who your Father is, because you are sending me your Spirit to live in me and through me. And whatever struggle I have in my life, I don't have to face it alone anymore, for it is no longer I that live, but you that live in me, and with you I can conquer all things. I thank you that you sent your son to make a way for me to be with you in heaven, that you sent your son to die for my sins, that he was buried, and that he arose again the third day. I just praise you for loving me that much, and I just ask you to come into my life, be my Lord and Savior, and walk with me every day. And we just give you all praise and glory in Yahushua HaMashiach. So if you have made that decision, get your Bible out. Ask him to lead and guide you through his word. And we will go into other resources um, for you that you can join in and grow in him. It's not so easy to point you in any direction these days because so many churches have become synchronized. I'm sorry to say that, but that's the truth. So next week, or next video, if you will, join us again, and I will give you some resources to help you on your walk. But the most important thing that you can learn as a new Christian that many of us have not is spiritual warfare. It is in from the beginning of Genesis all the way through Revelation. We must understand spiritual warfare because as a new believer, you now are also a target of our enemy, Hasatan, and his army of darkness. So there's nothing to fear, but always put on your full armor of Yahweh. Read Ephesians 6 and, and physically go through the process of putting on your, girding your um, loins with truth, putting on that breastplate of righteousness, putting on the helmet of deliverance and salvation, putting on your feet 
the um, gospel message of peace and pulling out your sword of the spirit which is a two-edged sword and we're going to study this some more next session and having your full body armor of faith to withstand the fiery darts of the evil one and pray without ceasing and when you have done all to you can do to stand stand therefore as a warrior be ever mindful be ever alert for your enemy prowls around like a roaring lion seeking whom he can destroy but victory is in Yahushua HaMashiach next week join again and we are going to look at this in more detail blessings to all Shalom